Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Well, it's a little hard to actually even focus what I intend to say after having listened to the rubbish that's just come out from the member for Sturt, as he claims that this is the hard work of the government in ensuring transparency and accountability. When could I just point out for the member for Sturt, and the minister will confirm, this loophole was brought to the attention of the government by the independent member for Indi. This was no sleuth work or great legislative work coming from the government. So, could we just pause a little on the inference that the member just made to the House that somehow this loophole has been used by independent members to somehow be accepting donations from foreign, uh, foreign donors or in ways in which that, the, you know, that would be contrary to the disclosure requirements of members of the major parties. Because the irony that the government has the gall to come into this place, and the member for Sturt and whatever members speak on this after, have the gall to come into this place and talk about transparency and accountability in respect to donations is just breathtaking. Let's talk about what this is. This is Electoral Legislation Amendment Annual Disclosure Equality Bill 2021. I have no issues with it because it is a loophole we have identified and has been brought to the government's attention. It closes uh, a loophole in respect to a sitting member prior to announcing as a candidate for the next election receiving a donation over $1,000. The, I mean, it, it's the, because donations made to uh, a party and for members of parliament that are members of a party, they're typically made to the party rather to the individual. So the party will disclose each year donations received. Well, I'll come to that in a moment because we know the full disclosure doesn't occur. But so whilst a party member is caught essentially by the obligation to lodge a return, in most cases, they don't have anything to disclose because it's simply wrapped up in the party return. But obviously, in situations of individuals, individual uh, MPs, they still have to include all gifts or donations received for federal purposes, uh, regardless of value. So this introduces the disclosure of the source of the donation if it is above $14,500 threshold, disclosure threshold. But what this is actually introducing is an additional uh, disclosure requirement on, on independence that is not imposed on members of the party. Uh, it does go well beyond that requirement of reporting. Part three of this bill clarifies that candidates will be subject to obligations under the Act even if they haven't announced their candidacy. So they're deemed a candidate uh, to be a candidate for six months before they announce or nominate. So in this situation, the government is quite happy to be retrospective, but it, the irony of how often it is not willing to be retrospective in looking at its own house. They will deem a candidate... Um, so, I mean, the irony is there's just no justification for backdating all obligations to six months before a candidate announces. It's to cover up a time when that candidate potentially has no idea they're even going to be a candidate. Um, and particularly when laws applying to a pre-candidate entity are being tightened in the political campaigner bill as well that passed this place last week to require disclosure of donations received uh, and foreign donor bans uh, for that pre-announcement period. There's no doubt the government and the coalition are scared of the independent movement. All these legislations are little pieces of puzzle to try and stifle democracy. They are trying to preserve their status quo and limit competition. The irony that that goes so against liberal principles, so happy to espouse in any other situation. The practical implications of this bill, it will have very little material impact because independence are broadly designed, well, have been based on integrity. We have been calling time and time again for transparency measures, integrity measures, and for lowering the donation threshold, for real-time donation reporting. All those measures this bill is silent on. We wouldn't want to be increasing any requirement on ourselves, would we, government members? But anyway, this is the campaign that they are choosing to make. And I see the member for McKellar is here, which obviously he is here because he knows he will face a concerted campaign from his community 
because they are dissatisfied with the transparency and integrity shown in this place. All states and territories have more transparent donations regimes with lower donation thresholds than the federal government. Last year, both parties worked together to reduce transparency of political donations further in avoidance of the High Court ruling. Independents were the only ones in this place to oppose that change and propose amendments to increase transparency. This bill and the political campaigner bill debated last year, it's an obvious assault on trying to minimise competition in this place. It is so hypocritical for members of the coalition to come in this place and talk of transparency and accountability. When we have situations of blind trusts and defences of blind trusts that come forward, when we have a refusal to stop lying in political advertising, when we have a delay that is so unexplained on introducing a federal integrity commission, where every attempt at increasing accountability and transparency in this place is opposed. But of course they will come in here and grandstand about their call for equality and transparency. If the government truly wanted to improve equity and disclosure, it would make the reporting timeframes consistent across parties and independents. After the last election, independents had to disclose their donations by October and they were made public in November whereas the major parties did not have their don well, all parties did not have their donations public until the following February. I don't see any measure to amend those provisions in this legislation. Also, an independent only campaigns in their seat. And so it is very clear for their community that they see what monies have been raised and what has been spent in that campaign. But the major parties there is no breakdown per electorate. No party MP needs to disclose how much they have spent or how much they have raised. They hide under the cloak of the party banner. It's one large malaise dumped in a spreadsheet without any fidelity on which electorate raised the funds or which electorate funds were spent. By contrast, the independents campaign on integrity and are transparent. They represent single seats, they provide fidelity at every election and it's disclosed in a more timely manner. Last month I seconded the bill introduced by my colleague, the member of Indi, which would increase transparency of political donations. It would reduce the threshold for disclosure of political donations from $14,500 to $1,000 and it would increase the reporting frequency to every quarter for $1,000 and within five days of donations above $14,500. This is the type of donation reform this parliament needs. For too long, money has been hidden from view and from public scr scrutiny. Our democracy has been for sale. The incumbents are doing all they can to hold on to that status quo as hard as they can. We do not know who is paying for access to politicians and to government, the, what influence that is having over decisions. The Big Deal documentary recently aired by the ABC last month has shocked so many people around Australia, but it certainly has been noted by constituents. It revealed that over 55% of donations to the ALP and 65% of donations to the coalition were undisclosed. Didn't hear that in Member for Sturt's speech, and I'm sure I'm pretty confident we won't hear that in any later speeches. The unashamed portrayal of cash for access and influence was horrifying. Transparency is essential to good governance and public trust in democracy. The goal of the government to increase transparency requirements under this pretense that we must have been trying to hide something, ignoring we brought it to their attention, and then uh, especially in circumstances where so many of independents voluntarily over-report and espouse transparency. Um, at the same time as we have this unanswered question of a blind trust, of significant amounts of money having been donated to the former Attorney General for his personal use, and yet there is no disclosure of who made those donations 
where they came from, were they from foreign donors. There is nothing, nothing on the record. So the, the, the guile of this, of this positioning is just, I, I, I'm quite comfortable because I know the Australian people can see through this. They've had this time and time again and they see through it. The government is, well, the coalition are so busy looking at those challenging them that they completely failed to recognise the challenge and why the challenge has emerged. The independent movement that the government is so desperately desperate to squash exists because people are fed up with the, what happens in this place. They're fed up with the lack of integrity, the lack of transparency and accountability of the major parties and their lack of action on key issues when it comes to women, when it comes to integrity and when it comes to climate. So as the election, at the last election, only 25 per cent of Australians have trust in the federal government. And I can't imagine that has risen any for this next election that's coming. And I have no doubt that the lack of transparency contributes heavily to that. So, hey, I support this legislation. This is great. But if you really want to come to the Australian people on a platform that you want equality and accountability, bring forward some measures that clean up your house. Seriously, it is time to improve the transparency and accountability measures. If you want, cons I support consistency and improvements. So let's bring in some reform around political donations. Let's make sure that we actually bring in and support legislation around truth in political advertising. And I note the member for McKellar who's going to come in, I am sure, and talk about the nerve of the independent movement not being held to the same standards of accountability. But yet, while supporting there should be truth in political advertising, has not come in here to talk about that increase of standards, I am sure. So, and then we have donation transparency. And how can we talk about accountability without talking about a Federal Integrity Commission? So overdue. The model the government is proposing is a model that creates a double standard. It is trying to hold MPs in this place to a lower standard than anyone else. That cannot be acceptable. Transparency and integrity are really important issues in Moringa and I believe around Australia. People have had enough and that's why they are turning to alternatives. It's really important for people to understand this is your democracy. This place is to represent you. The people you put in this place will, are only here because you put them there. It's absolutely time to engage in your democracy. At the end of the day, if you are a bystander, decisions will be made about you that impact your lives. So the call to communities, get engaged, get involved, be onto the issues, demand accountability from your members, from us, from me as an independent, but all your members of parliament, demand accountability, hold them to account, their voting record, what they say to you, what they say in this place. The Australian people and I, have really had enough. Thank you.